All right, uh, hello. First, I wanted to uh, introduce myself. Um, Mitchell Hassenbein, I'm a wealth manager at Oppenheimer in Jericho. And I wanted to thank Andrew Hazen and Launchpad for allowing me to be one of the sponsors tonight. So uh, thank you, Andrew. Launchpad, pre uh, yep, exactly, appreciate it. Uh, when Andrew was telling me we're having a fireside chat with Josh York here at Launchpad, I stopped the meeting and said, wait, is that the guy with the red trucks, uh, gym guys, shaved head? Yeah, that's, I, I go, I want a sponsor. He goes, what do you have to do? I go, I go what do I have to do? He goes, yeah, buy some books and some light. I go, you got it, books, refreshments. Uh, you know, I would, I would be so glad to be here to hear his incredible growth story. Now, everybody in this room, I want to warn you, if you're going to stay here and you're going to listen to Josh and hear his stories, one, you're going to be motivated, two, inspired, and three, you may learn something. So if this is not for you, it's, this is your cue to leave. So um, now let's get to Josh York, uh, Long Island product like most of us. Went to CW Post, graduated 2007, had to pay his way through college like a lot of people. And, you know, being a fit guy, he thought, ah, good idea, I'll be a personal trainer. You know, I'll pay my way, I'll pay my bills, have a look, just spending money, not a problem. But Josh, you know, he wasn't your normal personal trainer. He knew he had good clients, they wanted to be in shape, they wanted to feel good, but they all had one problem. They had missed sessions. He couldn't figure it out, but he came to realize they didn't want to leave the house. So he figured, if they're not going to leave the house, I'm going to go to them. Pretty genius, right? So he had about 15,000 in savings left, living in his parents' house, on his laptop one night, figuring, you know, how do I make this a business? He thought, maybe if he got some trucks, maybe if he got some equipment, I'll go to them. And that's what he did. Let's get to 2008, 2009. He goes from zero clients to 1,000. That dining room became an office building, and Jim Guys was created. And in 2018, he was recognized as one of the fastest growing franchises in the country. So we give Josh a hand for that. Now, now Josh is going to tell you a lot more than I can. All I can say is read his book, follow him on LinkedIn, you want your daily motivation. The man taught me more about Swiss cheese than I'll ever know. So you guys may, if you're lucky, you may get that story tonight. Uh, and hopefully you will. So everybody, a big hand for uh, Josh York. Thank you, Mitch. Good job. Thank you for that wonderful intro. How's everybody doing? Good. Well, thanks for uh, coming to sit with us tonight, Josh. We have a very informal format. I did obviously read Josh's book, and uh, Mitch already alluded to some of the story or the journey, but for those of you who don't know about Josh and Jim, guys, I'm just curious, do we have any franchisors or franchisees here tonight? Okay. So, basically, when you're driving and you see these red vans all over Long Island and some of these road signs on the service roads or in main intersections, Josh is the creator and the founder of Gym Guys. And what Mitch was saying a little bit earlier, which is what I want to start off with Josh is, take us maybe three to six months prior to that event or aha moment when I believe it was a female client was late for a training session and said to you, Josh, I wish you would just come to me. So kind of, Mitch did paint a very nice picture, by the way, of where you were, but kind of take us where you were a little bit before that, when that happened, and then the experience thereafter. Absolutely. So I've always been in the fitness industry, and I tell everybody, if you want to be super successful, you have to be passionate about what you do. You have to love what you do. You have to be obsessed. If you are not obsessed with what you do, it's not going to work. I am obsessed. So pretty much I've been in the fitness industry. Now the, the challenge is, I'm gonna see how long I can sit for and then I'm gonna have to stand because I can't sit. Right. So, so um, doctors and trainers are no different, right? A doctor without patients is unemployed and a trainer without clients is unemployed. And I used to always say to myself, how can I make money when I'm not working? But you know, you're supposed to go to school 
Okay, I have my thoughts on that. You know, my wife doesn't like when I say this, but you know, look, if you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, I think school is very important. But if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, I think school is, per, per, you know, really personally a waste of time. Um, there's lots of things that school should teach you, like how to build relationships. You know, you shouldn't be taking a music class or, you know, taking calculus and learning about derivatives when you're never ever in your life going to ever do anything stupid like that, unless you're that's your profession, right? So. Here I am in school, you know, graduated, I got a nine to five job, and I started working for a boss. Is there any bosses in here? So I hope not. Because leaders create leaders. You have to be a leader. It's very important to think here first and think here second. When you think with your heart and you're real, well, you create a culture. When you create a great culture, you create great people. But I'm working for a boss, do this, do that. I cringe when people call me the boss. I hate it. It makes me absolutely like nauseous. So, you know, I just couldn't take it anymore. I can't be around negativity. I literally take negative signs and I slice them down the center and I make them a positive. I will get rid of a family member if they're negative. That's how serious I am. I cannot be around negativity. You are who you surround yourself with. I have literally zero friends. I got actually one good friend. That's it. I, I, I do believe in solitude to some degree, but just most people don't get me and I'm just a positive guy and I just can't, I just can't roll like that. So I said, you know what, let me go back into fitness because I was making hundreds of thousands of dollars as a personal trainer by myself. But see, most people like to think short term. I think long term. I think scale. I think this is a marathon. That's how I've always thought. Most trainers, they're making a couple hundred grand a year. They're like, this is great. Yeah, what are you doing when you're 50 years old? It's just not, not scalable. I was like, let me go back into fitness. Every no always gets me closer to a yes, and I'll figure things out. So I go back in the industry, you know, had to build up all my clients again because I left, I let, I let go of all of them. And one of my clients came in late one day and said, Josh, I wish you can come to my house. I just don't have any equipment. And I was like, wow, this is like one of those ideas where it's like, why didn't I think of this? How great would it be if I got a van, stocked it with all the necessary equipment, provide people with our three C's, which are the core competencies of our business, convenient, customized, and creative workouts, and service clients anywhere. Home, office, pool, park, place of worship, hospital. You want to work out in the closet? We can make that happen. We can literally bring the workout right here. And we can start doing classes right here, which we should talk about. So, <laughs> ABS, always be selling. So, anyway, so, so literally, you know, I said, I'm going to come up with a great name. And I want it to be different. I want it to be powerful. And you'll learn I love acronyms. I'm obsessed with acronyms. So, Gym Guys is get you motivated. Guys is genuine, unique. You can do it. Zero excuses. And Gym Guys was born. Today, we are the fastest growing fitness brand in the world. We've grown faster than any other fitness concept in history. And when I tell you right now, in 15 to 20 years, we will be the largest fitness brand in the world, the chances of that not happening, you got a higher probability of seeing elephants fly. And you mark my words on this. I will guarantee that. We live in an Amazon world. If your business is not Amazon proof, you will die. You need to really understand that and get obsessed with that. And that's kind of, you know, how it started. So. When you're at the kitchen table and you have the $15,000 and the portable equipment, it was interesting, in the book you said you gave yourself two weeks. Yes. And of course, yep. and of course you exceeded expectations. <clears throat> but most people, especially in an environment like Launchpad or talking with entrepreneurs or raising capital, it's always about burn rate and how much runway do you have. Two, I mean, why did you give yourself two weeks? So I only had like $1,000 left over and it was just enough money to cover for two weeks. Let me tell you something very clear and listen to what I'm telling you. If you have a plan B, you're done. You hear what I'm saying? There's no plan B. There's no plan B. There's only plan A. If you have a plan B, you are not confident. And you need to become more confident. That's it. I said, this is what I'm doing the rest of my life. And that's it. And no one's going to stop me. I play to kill. I play like I'm the best. And I believe I'm the baddest person in the world. I don't care what anyone's got to say. That's what I believe. And you should believe the same thing. That's what I truly believe. But see, I do a lot of things that most people won't do because I'm going to have a lot of things that most people won't have. And when you start thinking like that, the problem is, look, you know, with $1,000, when I tell you how crazy I went, I mean crazy, crazy. Because I had two weeks to make it work and I literally filled up my van in two weeks. Two weeks. I didn't sleep. I didn't stop. I was very uncomfortable. You have to be uncomfortable in order to get comfortable. And if you're not willing to be uncomfortable, you're never going to get to that next level. Complacency kills, 100%. Yes. So 
I think a difficult question is when you're younger and you don't have much overhead or expenses or children or mortgages or camps or fill in the blank, how does someone now living on Long Island start their idea to take it from the next level? I mean, I also want to ask you, I guess, did you not raise capital initially? Did you no, it's been bootstrapped from day one, bootstrapped. I've turned down $30 million net. I didn't even tell my wife. If any of you ever meet my wife, do not tell her that. That'll be I, know, I know exactly where we're going. But you got to have a whole other level of confidence and belief in yourself to know where you're going to be going. So how does someone today, you know, if, if, you you're, just not, do it. if you're not 20-something years old... You just do it. There's always a way. Let me, let me, I'm going to share a quick story with you, okay? And it's a very important story, and I'm kind of going to... There's a reason why I'm sharing it with you. So who in here likes Nike? Raise your hand. Has Nike stuff at home? Okay, Phil Knight is the man. If you have not read the book Shoe Dog... I'm imploring you to read that book. That is the greatest business book I've, I've never read a book ever in my life, to be honest with you. I didn't even read my own book, but I read Phil Knight. I'm, not, I'm just not into books. It's just I don't, have the, I don't have the attention span to read a book. My energy is just and freaking. That's a, and that's a thick one. Yes, that is a thick one. That is a thick one. Audio I could do, but I'm, I'm just better learning audio from an audio. But anyway, so one day I'm in my office, and I just want to say this story because I want to show you that anything's possible. But one day I'm in my office and I said to myself, man, what do I got to do to meet Phil Knight, right? Seem almost like an impossibility, right? Phil Knight is celebrity. Guy's worth $38 billion. Imagine putting $38 million in your bank account. This guy's worth $38 billion. He's backed by a veil of corporate protection. You know, he barely makes appearances anymore at Nike. So you know what I did? You want to know what I did? I went out and I got a box. Yeah, a box. And in that box, I placed a heartfelt letter, a 2030 canvas of Phil Knight in his younger years, and a hardcover copy of Shoe Dog, and a Firestone. Yeah, a tire. I love shipping people tires. I've shipped more people tires than you could possibly imagine. 18-wheeler truck tires. And the message I put on the tire is my drive and intensity will leave tread marks all over your floor. We need to connect. So I shipped this box out to Phil Knight. The internet stated, if you were lucky, Phil Knight would get back to you within six months to a year, but due to the amount of packages he gets, he most likely will not get back to you. Okay? Called Nike, did the research, shipped out the box. Seven days later, seven days later, my door busts open, and there's my chief growth officer pushing this gigantic box to me with my name on it and Nike's return address on it. So with the anticipation of a five-year-old child, I run to the box, grab my scissor, open up the box. You want to know what's in the box? In the box was a signed tire, a signed canvas, a signed book that said, just do it. Now, let me be very clear about something. Nike said, if you do not prepay and put a box in the box, they will not ship it back. I didn't want the tire back. That was to send a statement. Phil paid to ship the tire back to me. Now, let me ask you a question. With speaking with me for so far for about nine, 10 minutes, do you think I was satisfied with this? No, freaking hell no. See, the problem is 75% of people quit before the miracle actually happens. Why don't you try getting to the damn finish line? So I went out and tried to find a handler for Phil Knight, which was very challenging. So eventually I got in touch with her. Her name, her name was Lisa McKinnon. I'm going to get this ready for it because I'm going to play someone for you in a second. So anyway, so Lisa, Lisa said, in, in 36 years of working at Nike, no one, no one has ever approached Mr. Knight in this way that he termed remarkable and special. See, you never think outside the box. You think like there's no box. I'm having dinner with Phil Knight in three months. So the purpose of this is, as my now friend Phil Knight would say, you just do it. And this, this was the message I got that day. Hi, this is a message from Lisa McKillop in Phil Knight's office at Nike. Um so that was, the, that, was, that was the call. And let me tell you something, it was a very, very, very it was a 47-minute sales call. And she's told me no so many times, and I never take no. I, I literally never take no for an answer. And the line that did it for her was I said, Lisa. I said, Lisa. And now you know I'm always pumped up. That is the number one most important thing. If you're not pumped up, you got a problem. You better get pumped up. I said, Lisa, you got a Nike towel in your room? 
She's like, excuse me? I said, you got a Nike towel. She's like, what? I was like, you need it. She's like, excuse me? I said, because my passion is dripping through the phone on your desk and you need to wipe it up. And after I told her that, she said, fine. You want to tell us about the billionaire who did say no to you and how that drove you to even be inspired more? Yeah, so <clears throat> first of all, you choose your own destiny, okay? So in 2007, I used to train a billionaire. To this day, I've never seen a shower like this in my life. This guy had literally, it was an aquarium for a shower. He had over half a million dollars of fish in it. It was like 50000 a month to clean it. He had like people with scuba gear that would go in and clean this thing. It was crazy. And I admired this guy. This guy was self-made. Very, very successful. And I told him about gym guys. And um, because of this, I ended up creating a holiday on August 1st. And if anyone wants to join me next year, you're more than welcome. It's called National Swiss Cheese Day. So back then, I told him about gym guys and what I wanted to do. And he said to me, he said, Josh, 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 your business is like Swiss cheese. It's got too many holes in it. You'll never succeed. So I left and I was upset, right? But let me explain something to you. And everyone needs to adapt this new rule. It's called the five minute rule. So I never get upset about anything. And I could tell you, I could sit here for the next 20 hours telling you about problems I have. <laughs> you have no idea. You wanna make big money? You solve big problems. You wanna make little money? You solve little problems. But the five minute rule is, you spend five minutes. You wanna cry, you wanna be a baby, you wanna do whatever you wanna do, you wanna go in the corner and break something. See, after five minutes, you're done. Because if it's not gonna matter in five years, who the hell cares? So I left that day and I said, screw him. I choose my own destiny. Fast forward seven years later, I'm on the front page of the New York Times in the business section. It says disrupting the fitness industry. He sees it, calls me up, and now he's throwing money at me. Oh, I believed in you the whole time. Yeah, I'm sure you did. So every August 1st, I FaceTime him. If he doesn't pick up, I send him a video. Half a pound of Swiss cheese. I say, what's going on, Bobby? How you doing? Happy National Swiss Cheese Day. Love it. Love it. I love if you would to educate the, uh, the audience also about emotional intelligence and how you've utilized it to basically ad almost adapt to any situation that you're in and how it's transformed what you've been doing. Yeah, so EI is a very a big component I'm very big in. And um, everyone knows Subway? So I've been mentored by Fred DeLuca, may he rest in peace, he's the founder of Subway. And he always, you know, in the early days, I went after the big dogs, and I just did not take an answer of no to just be mentored. Because obviously, if I'm telling you how to, to have a good head of hair, you, you're listening to the wrong guy, right? So you want to take advice from people who are obviously doing it. So he told me, you need to know what, what, make people, what makes people tick. I know what makes everyone tick. And that's the number one course in school they should be teaching you. How to build relationships. How to build relationships is the number one most important thing. And honestly, if you don't understand people, I always say you gotta be able to be friends with a criminal and you gotta be able to be friends with a billionaire. And if you can adapt to both, you'll be very, very successful. You have to know people because you know what? If, if we gotta go to the doctor because I'm sick and you're sick and we have to get in but he's booked and I know the doctor, who's getting into the doctor? That's how the world works, right? So you gotta focus on that and understand, you gotta understand people. I know people. I, I could size someone up within five seconds. It's just a skill I've just learned to perfect and craft over the years because everyone, says, everyone likes to say practice makes perfect. Mm -mm. Practice makes permanence. There's a big difference there. But you've got to perfect your craft. And with regards to connecting and reaching out to people, those that haven't yet connected with you on LinkedIn, you're definitely doing a phenomenal job of messaging, obviously a lot of video content, how and why, for those that are trying to figure out still the social media game in the second and third inning, you know, what, what's your goal with it, and how do you see the engagement and the interaction, and is it going for what you originally planned? Yeah, so I'm gonna pretty much be the next Tony Robbins, next Gary V. That, that's, that's what's gonna happen. You know, I've been hibernating for the last 10 years, but I truly believe that. I just connected with Gary. I don't know if you know Gary Vanderchuk, but he's a pretty big player. I just connected with him last week. I'm going on his podcast. I just secured Tony Robbins. I run a very successful podcast called Fuel Your Drive. You can check it out. I got the biggest players in the game on it. People that have millions and millions of followers. And, and I, I did this. I knew nothing about podcasts. I said, I'm just going to do this, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize other people's platforms with millions and millions of followers, and I'm going to grow my brand. And it's working out like crazy. It's amazing. But you know what? Again, 
Number one rule, energy. Where your focus goes, energy flows. If you have no energy, you're going to die. Seriously, you're never gonna survive. You think your team's gonna be excited if you're like, how you doing guys? Well, you know, today, uh, forget. No, no, you gotta have energy. I'm always jacked up. I could literally get hear gunshots outside my house. I will wake up fired up, ready to rock and roll, because that's how I operate. And you gotta operate like that at a high level, but I've connected with the best of the best because I think like there's no box. And, and you operate early, right? I operate very every early. 315 every day, ice bass at 37 degrees. I duct tape my mouth when I do cardio, breathe out of my nose only. I do things that other people won't do because I'm gonna have things that other people won't have. That's how I got to Josh. I actually emailed him at about 4.30 in the morning, told him about Launchpad, see if he'd like to come and speak, and I had a response, I think, before 5.15 a.m. So it goes to show you, and this is not, this is not a few days a week. This no, is, this is every day, this look. This is not in the last five years. Let me explain something to you. Normal doesn't work. Listen to me. I'm gonna be the realist with you. I'm not none of these bullshit other people out there. I'm being real with you. Normal doesn't work. Weird equals rich. I'm telling you that right now. Because a lot of people say I'm crazy and I am in many ways, but let me tell you something. I'm the most disciplined individual you're ever gonna meet in your life. Ever, ever. You think I like waking up at 3.15 in the morning, really? I got a flight tomorrow at 5 a.m. I still gotta go back to my office. I had to coordinate how I'm gonna get my workout schedule and how I'm gonna get my ice bath. I still drink the same amount of water when I travel. I gotta have my cup of blueberries. I am freaking obsessed with my routine. Routines are the number one most important thing. And if you can't stick to a routine, how many DMs and messages I get, oh, you know, I really wanna be successful. Can you help me get out of bed? If you can't get out of bed, you're not gonna be successful. I'll tell you that right now. Well, they gotta start by putting the alarm clock across the room, right? They could do that. I don't even use an alarm clock anymore. I'm just up. Are you still training? Clients? No, I haven't trained in like eight, nine years. Yeah. So how do you how do you spend most of your day now? And and breaking into three other countries, <clears throat> had, I mean, like you said, there's plenty of issues. But has has language been a barrier? Currency, metrics, like what things have you encountered going into other countries that you didn't anticipate? So let me let me explain something to you. If someone asks you to do something, you just say yes, and you figure it out after. If you don't commit, you're done. I got a big meeting I'm leaving for tomorrow. I told this guy, literally, I got to meet with this guy. And I was like, oh, it's so funny. I'm actually going to be in Florida next week. He's like, really? I said, yeah. I was like, can we do Thursday? He's like, sure. I wasn't going to be in Florida. I changed my whole schedule around, booked the flight last minute, and I'm going. That's how you get the job done. That's how you get the job done. It's very, very important to understand these things. But look, you have to just always commit, no matter what. And figure it out l later, you know. But my typical day, man, it's it's changes like crazy, crazy, you know. My, uh, you know, I'm getting thousands of emails a day. You know, I'm dealing with issues. This one's suing me. You know, I'm going into a new country. We possibly have a franchise development issue with the FDD, or this person is not hitting their numbers, or now this person is complaining. You have to learn how to remain calm. It's very, very important, and that's why that five minute rule is very important too, because. So uh, two weeks ago was a crazy week. So this, is happening, this is all happened in one week. One of, my, one of my team members who's been with me for the longest, who I treated like family, he brought a lawsuit against me and brought all these coaches, which is a bullshit lawsuit, that saying I'm not paying him properly, right? Later that day, a van, one of my coaches backed up into the wall of a client and smashed a whole brick wall down, okay? Then someone came back later that day, quit, when, when literally this person pumps out a lot of sessions, then I found out another franchisee is going to sue me because he's saying I, I misled him with something. That was my day. And you know what? I was freaking feeling fantastic. Because you know what? This too shall pass. Think about Tiger Woods. You remember when Tiger Woods was abused for what he did? You remember that? And then he won the Masters and he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Everything passes. But it's all about how you deal with it. But my days can be all over the place. I travel a lot. You know, I have a family. I, I, I really do have work balance. I'll tell you that right now. To some degree, I make sure I'm with my family. But when you talk about work-life balance, that's, that's BS. But that's why I wake up so early. You got to make time. You got to make time. And you got to always be on that grind. Because if not, someone else is going to take it from you. I work every day. Like, I've literally been doing this from the beginning. And I have the same feelings. And I act like I have to make sure I'm bringing money home to feed my family. Because if you don't work 24-7, 365, someone else is going to take it from you. And although no one's going to take it from us because we're so far ahead, I still work like that to this day. 
given your energy in today's technology, how do you best communicate with all your franchisees? Is it is it video conferencing? Is it they fly, do you do quarterly live sessions? I mean. Yeah, so we do a lot of conditioning. So I kind of, if you look at like an athlete, right, for example, if an athlete's not doing well, they're getting sent somewhere for a conditioning stint, you know? So we, we're doing monthly conditioning calls. It could be through Zoom. We have a lot of platforms we built out and technologies and APIs that talk to each other. So, you know, the support is really, really spot on and very, very important because our motto is very simple, franchisees first, right? You know, if, if our franchisees are not happy, then our clients are not happy. If our clients are not happy, then nobody's happy and we're not in business, you know? Right, but you're definitely not impressing me as someone that's sending emails to hundreds and hundreds of franchisees no, no, to, no. Get, to get your message across. So you have a whole back-end platform that yes. they get to see and interact? Yeah, but I have a big team and I have a support team and people that deal with X amount of franchisees and people who are in different stages, you know, pre-launch, launch, post-launch, you know. Do you have a board of directors and or a board of advisors? So I do, yeah. I do. And how would you recommend someone starting out? How vital is it? Uh, I don't. What, what so, anything do you do? They, you know, do do you offer? I think the number one most important thing is just connecting with the right people. That's it. Look, I've cased a coffee shop once for literally two days straight without any sleep, in the middle of winter. Now most people be like, oh, well, I want to be in my bed because it's so so sacrifice. Freaking two nights. Who the hell cares? Sacrifice. You got to be willing to do those things. But like, those are things that you need to do in order to get to where you need to be. And you talked about with goals, five years, 500 franchises, looks like you're well on path to we'll probably pass, exceed we'll, that. We will exceed that, yes. Um, I'm just curious, did you, have you ever sat down and actually written out a business plan for no. this? No. no, nope, no. It's amazing, right? No. Listen, being analytical does not work. I'll tell you that right now. If you overthink things, it doesn't work. If you're scared, doesn't work. You just got to believe, and I know this sounds like really kind of weird saying, but it's just always going to work out. You got to believe that. I could tell you stories. I'll give you ulcers of what I've been through to get to where we are today. I've had more negatives in my bank account than sunny days in the Caribbean. I think I have a total of 372 non-sufficient fees from the bank. I'm not even kidding. And I actually end up getting them all back. I always make that happen. But and you get the clients in snowstorms. Absolutely. I make my team literally during rainstorms, snowstorms, do van waves in high traffic areas. And people are like, oh, this is crazy. And people actually call. You know, someone's out there and it's, it's raining out. Yeah, it's, good. Well, <laughs> it's very important for us to help people and change people's lives. You got to be willing to do things that other people won't do. It's very simple. Very, very simple. But, you know, I literally, it was a Friday night. And um, I was considering driving to Atlantic City to put my life savings down on our color is red. On red. And I have to hit it three times to make payroll. I had no money in my bank account. It was like negative 20 grand. And I was like, you know, this is a really stupid idea. So I had to figure out how I was going to raise money so I, payroll was going to make payroll on Monday. And this is why, again, I'm telling you to read the book, Shoe Dog. You want to talk about stories. You need to read that book. Um, so I didn't do anything on the weekend but called every single client. And I gave away more free sessions than you could possibly imagine and raised 46 grand overnight. Overnight. I literally had to go pick up the checks. I couldn't take credit cards because I needed the money in my account. There's always a way. There's always a way. Always. Always. So what's the plan if you're going to exceed the 500? Is there, because you're long, is it to keep it as it is? is do you see a potential acquire down the road? Um, technology play? And how do you also compete in the world of Peloton and, and the apps? <laughs> So you can't eat chicken every day. That's number one. Okay. People now like to do a lot of different things. All right. A lot of our clients actually have Peloton. Some use it. Some use it as a clothing rack. The difference is when the van pulls up to your house, we call it the accountability van because it's holding you accountable. Human interactions never going anywhere. Robots can't replace what we do. So that's the answer to that question. As far as locations, we're going to have over 5,000 locations throughout the world. Easy. Easy. And I'm already cooking up my next brand. We're going to start getting close to it. And you're raising capital, keeping it as is? No, keeping it as is. Good for you. What do you charge for a session? Sessions range, it could be from the low 70s to the high 90s for a package. It's all package based. For an hour? For an hour, yes. Go ahead, questions? Feel free. Yeah, so what do you do? So do you have product that you use it to upsell, like uh, vitamins and supplements or anything like that? No. Maybe. Listen, too many people are not focused. 
you got to be very focused. When you start getting all over the place, you start making mistakes. You got to be super focused. And until you can do it really, really well, you can't start jumping and getting into other things. Eventually, though, yes. Tony? Yes. I registered in every single state. At once? At once, yes. Uh, you're currently in 30 plus, 30 something states? We're in 31 states. Yeah. And this is all, you know, Josh has been doing this a while, but the franchising is only four years? We're in our fifth year now. Fifth year, 265. 265 franchises in, in the fifth year. What's the franchise? Uh, one territory is 35,000. If you do three, it'd be up to as much as 90. Financials meaning investment? Liquidated, like net, net worth? Net worth, yeah. Yeah, like 150000 I love to know the road signs. Highly, highly effective. So let me tell you a story about the road signs. So you, ever, you remember that song, Can I Get an OPP? You remember that song? Yeah, sure. So omnipresence, presence. If you don't have omnipresence, man, you're not going anywhere. I'm a big believer in ABB. Always be branding. You will never catch me anywhere without gym guys on. I wear the same clothes every day. I got like 30 of the same shirts, shorts, every single day. That's my outfit. That is my uniform I wear every single day. Now, the lawn signs, I get fined a lot for them back in the day, a lot. One year, I paid almost $100,000 in fines. A <laughs> hundred grand. And I generated about $850,000 in revenue. But then, but then, I said, you know what? I'm going to not get paid. I'm not going to pay fines anymore. And I was telling my team this, like, how are you going to do that? I was like, just watch. So each week I went to court, you know, everyone starts to know me now, and I started building relationships. See, I don't care what business everybody's in. You're in the people business. I don't care if you're selling screws or you're selling fitness. You're in a people business. So one day the judge said, Josh, we told you this, you know, this is not, you know, I'm getting to the point where, like, this guy's, like, about to arrest me. Like, that's how much I was doing it. And I said, listen, do you like Batman or Superman? I'm a big Batman guy. Who do you like? And he's like, where are you going with this, Josh? I was like, can you just answer the question, Your Honor, please? So he said he likes Superman. I was like, well, I like Batman. And Batman was kind of misinterpreted at first, right? They thought he was like a bad guy. But he was just trying to help people. So I pulled out a story, and I read him a story each week of a live I changed. And then one day, he came in the parking lot and signed up for gym guys with his wife. <laughs> so then, after that day... I've never had another ticket ever again. But they used to still pick up my signs, so I went even further. So I started figuring out in, in the sanitation department, who do I need to connect with? So I showed up there one morning. I found out when they had a meeting. I spent about 250 bucks. I bought egg sandwiches, cups of coffees, you name it, everything. Gear, I had gym guy swag, everything. Pulled up, these guys were not happy. They knew me who I was. I started talking to them, right? And again, criminal, billionaire, you have to adapt. And then they told me where the signs are every Friday night, what dumpster they throw them in, and I used to go pick them up. So I don't want to hear excuses because there's always a way. The problem is most people, and I hope you're not those people, because I can say this to most people, and they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Just like everyone says, oh, Josh, I'd love to talk to you. Can I please reach out? I, I did a keynote recently in front of 5,000 people, and I had like 100 people waiting to speak to me. You know how many reached out? You want to know? Zero. Zero. Everyone likes to talk, but no one likes to actually get the job done. So, and most people think people are not approachable, and you'd be pleasantly surprised, you know, when you reach out and you actually get responses. Is there another question? No? Do you have a banded team that goes out to do those signs? Yeah, there's, a, there's like a strategy behind it with our team members. Yeah, but people have to put out like X amount a week. I just put it out myself, and I just, I'm just a very good marketer. And the content that you're creating, I mean, for those that don't really realize it, it, it takes, it's, I mean, you're not doing anything extra yourself, but it's an effort. So can you talk about the recording and the editing and, you know, how they, they'll take a format and break it down into different bites? Yeah, well, you know, I have a team that does that. Anyone wants to talk to Nikki Rizzles, my man right here, this guy's the best guy in the game. But, you know, literally, you know, 
Look, I'm I'm actually really, believe it or not, very introverted. When I'm not, you know, you would not believe that, but when I'm like not working, I just like to kind of be with my family, and that's it. That's where I spend all my time. That's it, my kids and my wife, and that's what I like to do. But I wasn't really the guy, and I don't, I still don't put my personal life out there. But it's all business. But I had to step outside my zone. I thought it was kind of weird, like talking to my phone, like, "Hey, you doing? What's going on, guys?" But you know what? You just got to do it. Whether he's you in got, a diner, right, or you're. Uh, that's it. You, you just got to do it. And now my following has grown like crazy. And it's only getting better and better. And now I'm getting more speaking gigs. I'm selling more franchises. I just got invited on, on Tuesday. I was at the Wharton Business School, the number one business school in the world. They invited me to go on their business, business podcast. It was very funny. I had a professor in high school who told me I was a dumb jock. And he said, you better, you better learn a trait because you know what? <laughs> You're never going to be successful in life. And, you know, then I'm here I am sitting in a Wharton school, right? You can't let people get in your mind. You know, there's a lot of unhappy people out there that bring a lot of negative energy. You don't want to be around those people. That's it. Like, again, I don't care what people say because I know where I'm going and where I'm heading and no one's going to stop me. Do you sell commercials on your uh, Yeah, I've got ass, but right now I don't. But, yeah. Yeah, I make good money, you know? I don't know. You're staying long, as a Long Islander, any thoughts, I mean, in, in ever leaving, everyone complains about the cost of living here? Any, any? Nah, look, I love Long Island. I really do, but, you know, Look, I can't stand when people say, oh, my God, whoever's, whoever's going to be the president, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill my business. Oh, my God, it's too expensive. To Just make it work. These are all excuses. I don't care who's where or what. what. I, I started this in 08. Everyone's like, oh, my God, you're starting a business? It's the worst economical time to start a business. Yeah, and I was killing it. My first year, I made like $600,000 in my first year. Excuses don't equal execution. Yes. Uh, you mentioned Phil Knight. Any other inspirational people you'd love to have dinner with, like four or five people out there you follow that you think are just money, I guess? Yeah, well, I, I've already connected with them. Um, Dean Graziosi, I like him. He's got good energy. Tony Robbins now. Inc. Magazine told, literally put an article out that I'm taking this job. No joke, you can Google it. And then I told Tony, I was like, Tony, I'm taking your job. He's like, really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, Gary V. I I connected with. You know, that was a two-year process, and he thinks he's just like... He, he's an awesome dude. I really like him. He's a really good guy. And he wants to sit on my board now. So, you know, again, you know, the, see, I'm very big on persistence, but Gary was like, you know, he gets persistence on a bunch. And he really liked my strategy. And my strategy, I was just straight up real with him. I said, this is what I want to do. I want to call on your podcast. Here's why. And I'm just telling you right now, I don't care if A-Rod was on there. I don't care who the hell was on there. This is going to be the best podcast you've ever done. You want, you, want, you, want, you, want, you want me to tell you that right now? I'm talking to him just like this. And he's like, I really believe that actually. I said, yeah, you're damn right. If you're not confident, you're never going anywhere. And you're always like that? Always, always. I don't even drink coffee, baby. Always. Mindset. It's all what you believe. It's all what you believe. Put yourself in an ice bath. There's lots of benefits to it. The reason I do it, though, is just, it just takes my mental game to another level. Like picture, I, in the winter, it's brutal, man. My garage is freezing, and I go in, I go in there and jump at 37-degree water for three minutes every single three day. Minutes. Three minutes every single day. You got to have a better mindset, and it's very, very important. Cold showers, to me, are like hot showers. But these are things you need to do, and you might think it's crazy. It's not crazy. If you're not willing to step out of your comfort zone, look, I'm going to explain something to you very simple. See, there's a lot of great entrepreneurs out there, but it's a difference between an entrepreneur that's very fit and in good shape and an actual entrepreneur. Now, is there anyone in here who, pour, who pours like um, grease from their kitchen into their gas tank for fuel? Would that work? Well, why would you put stuff like that in your body, bad stuff in your body too, right? You gotta fuel your body just like you fuel your car with the proper gas, and you gotta fuel your body, and you gotta work out because that's very important too. And I'm a big believer in working out and creating, working out and creating success, but there's a whole different level. Like Gary Vee, for example, I love Gary Vee. I think he's fantastic. But I know how to really experience pain. He's not in the type of shape I'm in. And I'm not tooting my horn. I'm just being real with you. There's a difference when you actually can experience real pain. And I don't want this to come off and sound like twisted in any means, but I want you to understand where I'm getting with this point because pain equals growth. It's very, very, very simple. But you've got to experience pain. You're not talking about perseverance. You're talking about... I'm talking about pain. I'm talking like running a sprint with your mouth duct tape and you're breathing out of your nose and your heart rate's at like 194. Like, I'm talking like hard work. They just got rid of this machine where I work out. I was so pissed. No one wanted to use it. 
because it was so hard. And I loved the damn thing. I was so pissed. I wrote this note to the guy. I was like, why'd you do that? He's like, no one used it. I was like, please, I'll buy it for you because that's how much I like it. But the point I'm making is you have to experience pain to grow. And don't get it twisted. This is not one of these Instagram stories. where like, oh, man, I got all this money. I've been doing this for 12 years, killing myself, struggling. I had more. I still have pain sometimes. But you overcome it by you keep going. Get to the finish line. Why are you going to quit before you get there? Most people don't have the willpower to get there, and they quit. Well, my vans are operating 24-7, baby. You got to make money. Come on now. Yeah. And it's interesting. The vans carry 365 pieces of equipment, something for each day of the year. That's are, correct. Are you, are you innovating? I mean, with technology out there, are you innovating either the exercises? I've seen some of the videos. You guys, literally a chef in a kitchen, uh, a, a priest at a church, wherever it is, they'll do the workout. But is that something that's changing or that's pretty set because the innovation of the environment that they're working out in. Yeah, well, we're very big on research and development, so we're constantly putting new pieces to, to work here uh, all the time. But, you know, look, again, when you, look, fitness is an emotional buy, right? Because when someone's buying fitness, they gotta have an emotional connection to it because some people don't feel comfortable or whatever it may be. When you're working out with a coach and working out with us, you're just leaving that in our hands, right? Like I always say, you gotta be the doctor. You gotta be the doctor, whether you're selling or whatever you're doing. Because if you go to the doctor and you're sick and a doctor says to you, well, uh, here's three medications. What do you think you're going to get better with? You're going to be like, what? You got to be confident, right? So as long as you're confident, yes, technology is a big play. But as long as you're confident, whatever you do, I could go back old school and I'll still be winning. That's what I'm saying. You're not worried about I got to no. get these bells and I got to do this thing or the Zumba. No. You guys have a no. core focus. Quite, yeah, a couple more because I, I also want uh, Josh to get back to the office because he's got an early flight as well. Yep. Oh, it's called an S-Force. Awesome. This manual machine, you got to move it yourself. They're very intense. What, very. Like the Tony Little? No, nah, it's like you get your feet in there. It's pretty crazy. You could, you could Google it. Matrix. Have you tried the, the, the uh, freezing thing, the waist down? Let me tell you something. Okay, if you want to go freeze yourself in that machine, pff, ice bath takes it on a whole nother level. I, I tried that cryotherapy crap. I'm, let me tell you something. It didn't even do anything to me. Nothing. The ice bath is a totally different experience. You can't, you can't, even, can't even match it. Do you have a question, Joe? I bring, this, I bring this energy everywhere. If they can't deal with it, then I'm just not going to talk to them. Didn't Why you would walk, you know? Didn't you walk into a meeting? In a, was it you that walked into a meeting yeah. in a hoodie? Yeah. Yeah, so... To, <laughs> to, to so a long time ago, I wanted to meet Damon John, and now I'm connected with him. He's Great from Shark Tank. Yeah. And, um, and you both have your own bobbleheads now. Uh, there you you go. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I, I found out he was at this event, so I literally found out where Capital Bank headquarters there in Melville, actually, one of their, one of their um, sections... So I was like, I got to get in there, you know, and I just literally just walked in the office. I was, was back when I was training. I was wearing a sweatshirt. I had like yellow shoes on and I walked in and I was like, um, you know, I need to speak to somebody. I need to go to this event tonight. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. It's all closed out. I said, yeah. So um, I said, can you check? So when she checked, I just walked in the door and I just walked into this big room and I said, how you doing? I'm Josh York. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt this meeting. You're probably wondering what I'm doing. I, I spit now like a hundred miles an hour energy. I was like, listen, I just want to tell you, I think you're going to be very impressed. I just walked in this office, walked in this room. You don't know who I am, but I got to go to Damon John tonight. Let me tell you something. You're not going to be disappointed. And I'm a good customer. And the guy just, one of the guys just looked at me. He's like, who are you? <laughs> and I got the ticket and I went. Yeah, so there's a minimum spend that each franchise has to spend, which is seventeen fifty a month, and then there's a national advertising fund that comes out of royalties, which is two percent that goes to the national whole entire brand that we spend. You know, whether it's you know PR, Facebook ads, whatever it may be. Oh yeah, no, we we show we send our reports every year. Yeah. Right now, honestly, I'm just very big in the executive space. Yeah, back then, honestly, I just... 
No, not really. I just, I'm very aggressive. I just got in front of as many people as I can. Do you do a lot of the franchise shows? If anyone yeah, did? a lot of franchise shows, but again, it just comes down to people. I just started connecting with the right people. I just spent a lot of time. Look, the advantage you, everyone has today is you have social media. You can research people and be obsessed with them and know everything about them. That's how I've closed some of my biggest meetings. You just go on social media and find them and find out everything they like. I closed a huge deal like that. I knew everything about this guy. I did a little bump. Oh, excuse me. This is at a pool. I joined this pool club. I found out that the guy belongs to the pool club. Joined the pool club. My kids are excited. My wife's fired up. And I'm excited. And she has no idea why we joined this pool club. And I was like, I got to meet this guy. So there he is. After three weekends, I see him. I bump into him. I go, oh, excuse me, sir. How you doing? I was like, man, beautiful day, right? And we started talking. And I was like, man, I got to get home soon. I don't even have a dog. I was like, I got to feed my dog. He said, what kind of dog you have? And boom, just knew everything about him. And I'm like, he's like, man, we're so alike. I was like, we are. And then Tuesday, I'm in his office, and I close a six-figure deal because I'm obsessed. Did you have to buy a dog? No, I didn't buy a dog, no. I told him the story after the fact, and he was laughing. He loved it. He thought it was absolutely genius. That's great. That's great. Yes. Well... It, yeah, in the beginning, it was very hard. You know, I had to do things that are uncomfortable. Look, I always tell my franchisees this. If you can go to a busy area, okay, and I like to use the song Whitney Houston, but if you can go to a busy area, get up on a ladder, get everyone's attention, and start belting out Whitney Houston, I will always love you. Like, that's very uncomfortable. You'll be very successful. You have to step outside your comfort zone. That's it. And I always, to this day, still do things that are uncomfortable. Even when I don't want a coupon, I always try to get a coupon. And 99% of the time, I get the coupon because I build a relationship. If you're not practicing these things, you're not going to get better. If you don't want to be better than you were yesterday, psh, shame on you. I want to be better every day. I listen to like 20 podcasts a month. I usually read like two books, audio books. I don't read. And I'm just constantly filling myself. And half the stuff I read that I listen to, I know already. I'm just looking for a nugget. I just want one nugget. That's it. One nugget. You get one nugget, psh, that nugget can take you to the next level. Your question? Oh, yeah. Yes? Okay, so um, I wanted to know you're talking about how you went out and found your own mentors. So um, how did you choose them and how did you get them to notice you? Great question. Number one. He buys a lot of tires. Yes, <laughs> tires. But number one, energy. Energy. That is the number one most important thing. And you got to start practicing that. You got to be jacked up all the time. I'm telling you. If you don't have energy, <laughs> it's not going to work. But then number two is, who's done what I'm looking to do? And that's who I went after. Like, I connected. Like, I'm sure you heard of Mr. Reuter, Mr. Electric, Mr. Appliance. It's a company called Neighborly, formerly Dw Dwyer Group. They do $8.6 in sales. Dina Dwyer, who's the daughter of the, the you know, uh, the, the father who started it, her and I are like BFFs. And I went after her. Everyone's sitting in these seminars trying to learn from people who are, like, small scale. I'm going after the big dogs. And I just made it my job. That was my whole purpose of being at that conference was to meet her and connect with her and blow her mind. And next thing you know, I'm in Waco, Texas at her headquarters. She's spending all day with me. To get five minutes with this woman is a big deal. But you have to, you have to really research what you're trying to do, who's done it, how do you align yourself with them. Very important. What if no one's ever done what you're trying to do? That's a very good question then I would start thinking a little bit, like I say, like there's no box, and start looking at what you're doing, and maybe people who are similar, who have done something maybe that can align to some degree, or someone who's scaled the business, or depending on what you're trying to do, I don't know, you know? That's why we're here. Yeah, I, I, would take, I would take someone from, someone who's just got experience with business, who's, who thinks, you know, smart, who's got, you know, got good strategies, and kind of align it and look for that person. All right. Well, oh, yeah. final question. Here we go. <laughs> well, usually my assistant handles the majority of my emails, but I do see a lot of them, but not all of them. She'll kind of funnel through what I need to see, what I don't need to see. But it's just, you just, it's just time management. You just gotta have good. Time. I have, I have amazing time management skills. And if you say there's no time in the day to do it, I will prove you wrong. Because I still work out. I still put my kids to bed. I get it all in. I don't sleep a lot, but I've trained my body not to sleep a lot. But you've got to really train your body in certain ways, just like you've got to train your mind. And that is how you really get the ability to get to that next level and really, really, you know, explode your growth. 
Well, I really want to thank you for coming out tonight. Really thank appreciate you for it for making the time for us. Yep, thank you. Safe travels. And uh, if anyone's interested, I'm sure Josh will be around for a little while, but definitely check out the book. Worth the read. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.